Hello, hello, and welcome to Casting Networks. Thank you for tuning in today. My guest today is a lead agent at Ignite Artists in Vancouver. She recently published a book titled, I Am an Actor, a guide to help all creative heart-centered actors learn the business side of the industry. Please welcome Brandy England. Hello, everyone. Thanks for welcoming me, Tommy. <laughs> Hi, how's, how's it going? Really good. Um, I mean, it's beautiful in Vancouver right now, and the industry's really ramping up quickly. So it's been an exciting time because there's so many changes, especially with all the new self tapes and everything. So it's been an interesting time to be an agent and an actor. So it's fun. Yeah. So uh, staying safe, staying uh, COVID free, I guess. Oh, yes. So I've got my mask and my hand sanitizer <laughs> very close. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like it's, uh, man, I used to be up that way about once a month and I haven't yeah. been up there in so long and I don't know when I can come back and it makes me sad a little bit, but. True, yeah, crossing that border is really tough right now. I mean, I think it's completely shut down till the end of August. So I know a lot of, we've actually had three of our LA actors that are Canadian actually moved back here to Vancouver in the last couple months because there's so many projects coming here. So, but we'll we'll have a, a martini or some chicken wings or something right <laughs> <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, I've never act actually asked you this, but how did you get started as an agent? So. Uh, so this one's kind of funny because I come from a business background and I work with nonprofits and I never thought about the uh, entertainment industry at all. But a lot of my friends in Vancouver, I mean, pretty much everyone that lives in Vancouver has been in some part of the film industry. It's like 10% of our total economy as a province. So sure. um, a lot of my friends kept saying, oh, you know, you hooked me up with a job because you're friends with this producer, or this director, or this headshot photographer, or this modeling agency. You should be my agent. Ha, ha, ha. And then over a few years, they kept coming to me and saying, no, seriously, you should be my agent. So I opened a very tiny talent agency with 12 uh, actors on my roster that were all just friends of mine that wanted to have a better connection with their agent, that they knew who they were as a person, what their goals were, and then using like my business brain to get them to their dreams faster. So I did that for a couple of years. And then uh, the owners of Ignite, they had their own agency for 15 years and they really wanted to take it in a new direction. And we kind of liked each other's vibe. And they also own an acting college in Vancouver. So they said we can use all of the teachers and their classrooms and things like that to educate our actors. So we kind of came together and created Ignite only two years ago. And it's been great because we've already opened a Toronto office being run by Dean, who's an amazing actor and agent. And I don't know, I just, my friends pushed me into it and I've fallen in love with being an agent. It's now my favorite thing on earth, even though we work 16 hours a day on average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a tough gig. Um, yeah. I'm sure you, uh, when you were getting started, you, you didn't anticipate the level of work that goes into being an agent. And just... Well, working with mental health nonprofits too, uh, before and, and currently still, that's, there's a lot of work in both of those because it's people at the end of the day and we're, we can be a lot of work as humans. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so what makes you want to continue being an agent? What gets you out of bed in the morning? I mean, we're literally a part of making someone's dreams come true. Like, it's amazing to me, whether it's a principal actor, commercial background or model, and it's their first time signing with an agent, and then they book their first gig and they get their first check. Like, I remember, I don't know, we were only a couple months in, and this young lady who's just an amazing person, um, she came into the office and burst into tears and I was like, oh, I thought something had happened, right? And I was like concerned and she goes, Randy, my parents told me I couldn't do it and I just got a check for being on Riverdale and just like was sobbing and I was like, oh gosh, because I thought something was wrong, but she was we, literally every single day I get to be a part of making someone's dreams come true in an industry where most of the world tells you you can't be an actor. That's not a real job, but it is. And, and if we give them the right tools, you know, we're like a bartender mixed with a therapist. I think those are two great <laughs> jobs to have. And, and it's a blast. And we get to see our people on TV. It's pretty cool. So that's yeah. what makes me keep going. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. When you get to make that call, I, I would think that that's incredibly fulfilling to, you know, yeah. make someone's day, you yeah. know, make someone's life. Like that's the, their dream. Um, and you get to help fulfill that for them. Mm -hmm. um, so Ignite is known for having a pretty diverse roster uh, of different actors. Why is that so important to you? Um, so kind of going back to the first question, the other reason why I became an agent and like being an agent um, is because I, I, I always think about 
I don't know, 100 or 200 or 300 years ago when we would sit around a campfire and we would pass on stories from the past and talk about the future and it would just be like a collaboration of people sharing stories. And that's what movies and TV are. It's talking about the human condition and humanity. And we need that more than ever right now in the world. And uh, I mean, it's just, uh, we need to include people from all walks of life that believe in different things, that care about different things because we learn from each other when we grow. Like I just, yeah, I, I mean, I want actors with disabilities to know that they definitely have a place here. Um, actors from just ethnicities of different religions, we all have a story to tell and we all need to share it with each other. And so our goal with Ignite is to, to really promote that. And, and our goal eventually is to start creating our own short films, which we've actually done too this year with some of our actors who are amazing. Thank you guys, you know who you are. And they're including roles for actors with disabilities and actors of different ethnicities so that we are championing the human story. So that's kind of our goal with Ignite. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned actors with disabilities and you have that on your roster. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have received emails and chats from actors with disabilities wondering about um, what the opportunities are like for them, what their expectations should be. So I'm curious what your opinion is on that since you have talent with disabilities on your roster. Absolutely. Well, I mean, acting is a tough career to choose. It definitely is, uh, especially now that there's social media and the whole world's collaborating and everyone wants to be on TV. So you have a lot more competition. So whether you're an actor with a disability or an actor that's from another country that doesn't have access to a community like Vancouver offers for film and TV, I think everyone has the same opportunities. It's all about preparation. As long as you're preparing, 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 learning, 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 making yourself better, better, better every day, the right opportunity will come along. It's the same for anyone, I believe. I mean, you can be anyone from any walk of life and there's a role that is there for you and it fits you as a person and your skill level. So just always preparing, always training, and then looking for um, schools and organizations and teachers that will help you get grants. Like um, right now I'm in New Image College because our office is in New Image College in Vancouver and they help uh, actors, young actors from like homeless youth from Covenant House, actors with disabilities find grants and scholarships that allow them to attend their two-year acting program. So just looking for that, whatever neighborhood you're in, wherever you are, just looking for ways that you can get funding so that you can get a great education because they are out there. But again, you have to be prepared. You can't just show up saying, give me a grant if you haven't done any acting classes, done any studying, um, recorded maybe a self-tape of a scene that you think you're great for, showing people that you have the intention of being professional about it and, and doors do open for anyone. So that's yeah. my long answer. <laughs> no, it's a great, that's a great answer. I, I'm sure I'm messing up the quote, but I think what they say is that luck is preparedness and opportunity. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, that opportunity yeah. may come your way, but if you're not ready for it, then, you know, it, you're going to miss out your own on that. content as well. Like if you have a yep. story to tell, if you've gone through a life experience and you want to create it, make your own short films. That's, that's for anybody, not just for an actor with a disability, for example. Yeah, it, it's the easiest time ever to do that right now in terms of yeah. making your own content, collaborating with others. So it's, it's super important. Um, your agency also has a background division. Um, so do you think that that's the best way to get started? If I'm an actor that has no experience at all, should I start in background and then work my way up? And the second part of that, is there any downside to doing it that way? I think it really depends on the person. There's some people that background just isn't for them. I mean, it can be 12 to 16 hour days standing around or sitting in a room for 12 hours and getting half an hour where you are the guy in the back of the street walking around. For some people, it's really great money as they're saving money to be an actor. Um, it does allow some flexibility for your schedule. So if you're taking acting classes but want to leave days open for auditions, like with our agency, we have a very small background roster. It's actually only for our commercial and principal actors so that that way we can manage their schedules. So if they're like, Brandy, I really need to make some money quickly this month. We'll hammer it out some background, hopefully some SAE, maybe some upgradable stuff so they get some credits if they're newer actors. And then that way, if we are submitting them for a big audition, we don't submit them for background that day. So it's a nice balance. Um, yeah, background isn't for everybody, but I think it's it's a really great experience whether you're working background or um, like as a PA or a wrangler on set because it, it shows you what a day in the life of an actor is. You get to watch all of that and learn what a grip does. Like that's knowing that is yeah. essential, I think, to being an actor. So 
I think doing background is, is fine. Um, it, you have to like it though, but also just moving straight into commercial and principles if you're studying and have the skill set, I think that's great too. Um, and your second part of your question was, does it hinder you? Is that the yeah, second part? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think there's there's times when it definitely can. Like if you are in the background and you get pulled up to be like a featured extra behind the main actor, maybe you can't audition for that show in the future. However, if you talk to your agent and you say, look, send me for the cattle call ones because I just need to make money where I'm in a crowd of 500, it's really not going to stop you from auditioning. Nobody's, because the casting directors for background and principal are different as well, right? They're not right. like, oh, I remember casting them for background in this show three years ago. Like, they're seeing thousands of people every day. So I don't think it's going to hurt at all. Yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it is that, you know, you're getting onset experience. You're you're involved with the production so whether it's background or whether it's pa work mm -hmm. you're getting to see how things move on a set and that's really valuable for an actor because there's stuff that you might take away from that and go like oh yeah. i didn't realize that mm -hmm. you know this is well, how we all it's have structured bills to pay. background can do some very nice bills like i know one of our kids yeah. he's a juggler and he did three days of his sae juggling and his check was twenty four hundred dollars for three days because it was a night shoot, and so you know there's there's ways to pay bills as long as you talk to your agent and, and tell them what you want and what you can't do. I mean, be gentle with us because we work really hard and it's hard to manage everyone's schedule all the time. But I mean, if you have big goals, they should help you get there, right? So talk to them about what your immediate goals are. Yeah, that's great. Just have that conversation. Um, would you suggest that unrepresented actors? approach agents right now? And if the answer is yes, how should they do it? Um, this goes for any time. I think you can approach people now. Like I love uh, talking to people right now because we do have a little bit more time on our hands because it's not so busy as it was before, but you have to be prepared. If you don't have a resume, <laughs> a headshot, uh, some idea of what you want to do, so your goals for like at least the next year with an agent, um, some kind of training, like you'd be surprised how many people just send a selfie and say, hey, I want to be an actor. Will you represent me? And guys, you have to think of this as a profession, right? So <laughs> that's yeah. kind of my thing. Yeah, I think it's fine to apply right now, but be ready. It's better to take six months, work really hard to get a package that sells you. Because at the end of the day, this is a profession. It's a career, right? It's, you won't go into any other job without uh, the credentials. So why would you try acting just because you're cute? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you had moments where... Um, an actor might email you and they might submit and maybe you, you passed, but then months later, they come back to you with more experience or they repitch in a better way. And then you either bring them in for an interview or you bring them onto your roster. You 100%. We actually yeah. created a, a checklist for commercial actors and principal actors with our agency. So when people do apply, if they write a really nice letter, but they're like, look, I'm very new, but this is my goal. I would like to work with Ignite, for example. We just send them a, here's a principal actor's checklist. Once you have at least three of the main five things on this list checked off, please reapply and we'll be happy to coach you from there. Um, like I said, we're very lucky because we work with a, an acting college. We get to use their teachers. We're all paid working actors uh, in the film industry for years to, to coach our people. So it's, uh, we're lucky in that way. So. That, no, it's great. Um, I, I've seen this question come up a lot and I'm wondering about it um, okay. from you is I have an interview scheduled with an agent. What do I ask them? What do I do? What do I prepare for? So what are your thoughts on that? I, I have an interview tomorrow with you. What would you like to see that actor say and, and prepare in, in advance? Um, I mean, I, I re so when people apply to our agency, one of the questions that we ask in the application is why Ignite? And if you don't know why you're applying to that agency, like if you just take the 127 registered agencies in BC and blanket email them all, right? hey, it's, it's so bad, guys. Take the time to find- To whom it may concern. <laughs> exactly. And you're, as much as you want an agent, agents want great people. We, we're a team. We're a collaboration. Like- if you don't know why you want to join our agency or have me, for example, represent you, then why would I know how I want to represent you, you know? So it's kind of, oh, yeah, sorry if I went on a tangent there. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is a very passionate thing for me because I'm like, do your research, find out who you're going for and why you want them to represent you. Why have a agency that you know nothing about who might not represent you well, or you haven't done your research on for a year that doesn't serve you at all? I mean, there's so many times 
actors come to our agency from another one and they come to because we do these free workshops every second Sunday where everybody comes in, I mean, before COVID and, and now on Zoom, but everyone comes in and presents a new scene or something that they're working on and they get feedback from everyone and we bring in acting coaches and, and there's so many people that are like, I didn't even know how to make an actor's resume. And they were with an agency for three years. So do your research, find out which ones give you the tools that you need. Because like just in British Columbia, and I know people from all over are listening to this, but just here in BC, there's 127 licensed agencies you have to find the right one for you it's not just about getting an agent it's about finding the right team that's going to i mean these are your dreams right <laughs> so yeah do your research i think that's um, good advice for job seekers in general as well because as someone who has hired people in the past mm -hmm. and has done interviews i can't tell you how many times i go like so like what is casting networks and they asked me in the interview i have to like explain and i get that like i i would like to talk about about a little bit about what we do when they're just mm -hmm. like so what is it exactly yeah. like well why did you apply to this well uh, i mean just our local market we have we had a commercial actor just apply last week and myself and one of the other agents we were astonished because they had been with another agency for two years and they were mainly a commercial actor and 90 percent i'd say of the commercials of Vancouver right now are on casting networks <laughs> and they didn't even know about it yeah they had profiles on two others and they didn't even know it i was like <gasps> so that's why i'm glad we're doing this so thank you for doing this because people need to know about this software. <laughs> they need to know to get up um have you ever had uh, an interview with a talent and had a red flag come up and if so what were those red flags that made you go yeah yeah for sure i'm it's just unprepared unprofessional and unflexible um there's so many people i mean the industry has changed a lot in the last 10 years there's so much innovation that's happened within the industry and if you're not flexible as an actor like i've had people come in and and um I'll say, oh yeah, if you ever want to come, we do free workshop every second Sunday. They're free to come. They're not mandatory. They're just so if you want a community of actors around you, you can come and hang out with us. And they're like, I don't need a workshop. I'm a trained actor. And I was like, no, no, you're not listening. It's just an opportunity to connect with other actors if you want. And they're like, no. And I'm like, that's okay. Cause I'm, I'm a bit of a loner sometimes myself and some people just want to work on their own and that's fine. But being flexible because the industry is changing. It's like Netflix and Blockbuster. For any of you under 30, <laughs> um, yeah. if you don't know who Blockbuster is, they were video stores where you go and you buy a movie, right? Um, or you rent a movie, sorry, you bring it back. And Netflix went to them years ago and said, hey, we'll take all your videos, put them online, and we'll partner with you. And Blockbuster said, no, we're good. And within three years, they were pretty much gone from the planet Earth, and they were the biggest store for video rentals. And now Netflix is the big thing, right? So yeah. you have to innovate. Don't ever get stuck in that, oh, I already know everything box, because you never do. I never do. <laughs> yeah. I learn every single day from our actors and casting directors. So yeah, just th those are the big red flags when people are like, no, I already know everything. I don't need to improve. I'm like, then you would be on a big Hollywood film or TV show right now. So settle down a little bit with that ego. <laughs> so sure. it's the ego that really scares me because I like working with passionate people, not people that think they know everything. So. Yeah, that, that, me too. <laughs> uh, so how uh, you, you get someone that's submitting to your agency, how do you gauge their acting ability? Do you just um, go off their reel or their resume? Because you want actors with talent as well as everything else. Mm -hmm. So how do you know they can actually act or, or what are the main things you look for? So with our agency, it's very much twofold. Um, I would rather work with a person who's so hungry for their dreams, but they may not have the natural talent or the education on the industry and I can help get them there, but they have proven to me that they're hungry and they're like, no, nope, I'm going to show up every day for myself, for my dreams and work really hard alongside you as my agent. So that's my number one thing. I'd rather have someone with a smaller resume that is super hungry than someone with a bigger resume that's like, eh, you know, <laughs> so that's number one, but sure. we're really blessed at Ignite because we have um, one of our agents in Vancouver. She was in uh, as a casting director's assistant and worked in production for 22 years. Uh, one of our agents that runs the Toronto office, he was an actor for 15 years and had his own agency for 11 or 12 years. And so he's they've both been around and then i come from my business background and so the three of us look at things differently because actors are people cast directors are people producers are people there's no finite answer for anyone like there's no perfect answer right so all three of us will look through profiles and go what value does this person add and what can we add as three different humans to their uh, career and that's how we kind of make our decisions so for me it's a lot less about 
natural talent and a big resume or demo clip. It's about how hungry the person is and how excited they make me to be their agent. You know what I mean? So we can work hard together. So, um, I mean, obviously a demo clip really helps, but some people don't have that yet. So we help them jump into students and indies and all that kind of stuff so that they can build that resume and hopefully show us their acting abilities. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned that you have a Toronto branch. Do you rep actors in other areas as well? So like Calgary or even outside of Canada or like where, where's your clientele at? Oh, because everything's online now. We have, we probably have about yeah, 30 or 40 actors from the U S that are spread out between Chicago, Atlanta, New York, and LA. Um, I mean, my goal is to open Ignite Los Angeles very soon too, <laughs> when the world opens up again, but sure. I have big dreams. So um, we represent people from everywhere and we're lucky. We have um, really great partnerships with some other agencies. Like in Calgary, there's the Patty Falconer agency. It's been around since the eighties. And we met a couple of years ago and they were like, how about if we can't get our people into the Vancouver market, we show them to you and then you can maybe make that push in Vancouver. And likewise for us, there's some things that film in Alberta, and we can reach out to them and say, look, I have the perfect girl for Winona Earp, for example. Um, do you mind making that push? And so I believe that I mean, we grow faster together. The bigger team that you have working for you and believing in your dreams and pushing, I mean, the faster your resume grows and the more successful we all become together. So yeah, yeah. we rep people from all over North America. That's great. Um, so if you had to rank the following when oh. it relates to success <laughs> as an actor, Mm -hmm. So I got four things. I got talent, professionalism, mm -hmm. a look, mm -hmm. and luck. What would you say is the most important, or how would you rank those four things? If you need me to repeat them. Uh, I, I think I got it. Look, luck, professionalism, talent. Yeah. Well, I, I need to add one up here at the very top spot. It's preparation. Yep. <laughs> and then yeah. I think that follows very closely by professionalism, because if you don't prepare professionally, then you're not ready. Um, a look is hugely important in this industry because we're humans and we, whether we want to make a judgment call on another human or not, we do automatically, sure. but it doesn't mean that there's a look that doesn't fit in the industry. It just means you have to know your look and where that, what characters you can be, go for. You know what I mean? Like me, I got freckles and the curly hair and the crooked teeth and I'm a little chubby and I would be like the friend next door that gives advice, but I'll never be like, I don't know, Lara Croft. <laughs> you know what I mean? So know yeah. it yourself. So look, look is very important, but any look that you have, as long as you get really great character shots to reflect the roles that you could play, I really feel like that is really good. Uh, luck, I don't, I like you said before, and I know there's a million quotes, so it's okay if you mess up the yeah. pre preparation opportunity luck quote. I think there's one that's like it's 5% luck, 95% preparation, and Something there's like a few that. of them out there. So, and yeah. I believe in that. I really think that preparation and professionalism are at the very top. Some people have talent and some people work for talent. So that's kind of, sorry, I'm not ranking these in order very well. I? I <laughs> no, I think you got it. <laughs> yeah, that's you got my that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that I would agree with that. So. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter what I think. Um, <laughs> so uh, doing a lot of self-tapes right now. Everyone everywhere is doing a lot of self-tapes. So how's that been treating you? And anything that you'd like to suggest to actors or any tips based off of the, I don't know how many self-tapes you've had to mm -hmm. sift through in the past few months? A lot. We one week we had over 250 self-tapes. Um, oh myself and one of the other agents was up till, oh gosh, I was up till two and then I called it a night and he stayed up till 4.30 in the morning. That's Dean in Toronto. He's just a beast when it comes yeah. to work. Yeah. Um, it's more work actually for us as agents right now because as opposed to just booking an audition, we now have to watch the self-tape, make sure it's formatted correctly, upload correctly to the softwares. That's why I love casting networks. I mean, you guys just have wetransfer.castingnetworks.com and our actors send it to you guys and you guys upload it for us. So thank you for that. So that saves yeah. us time so we can focus on submitting and coaching our actors, right? Um, it's really tough for the actors that don't have a setup at home, especially during COVID, because they want to look good and they want to be professional, but they don't have the $300 to get the full setup. So it's been tough. And that's why I encourage actors to 
um, play with lighting, play with sound, find a room and test it out. Don't wait until you get an audition to do a self tape. Do a bunch of them in different rooms with different microphones. With, I mean, your phone camera is great. Just make sure it's horizontal. Oh my goodness, we don't want to watch a, a selfie video. It's, where it doesn't it, fit the TV. <laughs> it's such a common thing, and I think we've talked about it over and over. And there's still so many that come in like that. Yeah. I don't know how to. I don't know how to get it across, but thank you for mentioning yeah. it again. No it needs to be well, we, said. We've been creating a video library. We've got actors like uh, one of the young men, he's in uh, Batwoman and the 100 and a few other uh, shows right now. And he did a two hour self tape workshop on camera. He self taped himself doing a self tape workshop for all of our actors to watch. And there's tons of resources out there on YouTube, like Casting Network's YouTube channel. and. Just Google, 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 so you can learn how to do it professionally from home right now. Because being prepared before you get the audition, because it's really hard to set up a studio and memorize 12 pages and create a character all within 24 hours before you have to submit, right? So yep. yeah, prepare, preparation as always. Test it out and have your space that you want to, mm -hmm. you know, that you want to use for your self tape. Um, how do you feel about your talent working on student films or indie projects or kind of lower, lower rate or no pay projects? Um, I, I mean, I think it's great because today's student producer is tomorrow's Spielberg. Uh, who knows? You know, we, I know one of our actors had worked on a student film like five or six years ago. And then this person went on to do a, a film festival and pulled them again because they said, oh, I've worked with them before. So when we submitted, they were like, oh, I've worked with them before. And I know they were great and professional on set. I'd love to work with them again. So they automatically went to the top of that person's list. And especially at the beginning, you need to get over your auditioning, audition anxiety, right? So if you can audition in front of student directors and producers and casting, that's great because you can learn how to get over those jitters. And I mean, it gives you demo footage that's not just a self tape from your living room. So, I mean, I think that's brilliant. I, I don't think you should ever say no to anything. If you're truly an actor that loves to tell a story, as long as you like the script, do it, show yourself build your characters. It just adds to who you are as your life experience. Like I tell all my actors, go volunteer. Go volunteer in a homeless shelter. Go volunteer with kids with disabilities because it gives you life experience to understand the empathy to play a character well. And so every opportunity you have to act, I would take it. <laughs> yeah. So th those type of projects, usually, you know, talent can see and find on their own. And, and mm -hmm. most actors understand that your agent has a completely different set of projects. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes on the actor side, they're like, I don't know what my agent is doing for me, what they're submitting me on. So yeah. how would you suggest an actor approach that subject with you without coming off as rude? Because that's the, the main thing they're concerned about is like, I don't want to piss off my agent, but I want to ask them what they're doing behind the scenes. Well, I, I mean, I think every agent's going to approach things a little bit differently, but knowing how busy your agent is and starting off on a really great foot, like at the very beginning, when you're setting up your profiles and you're getting ready say, how would you like me to communicate with you? Would you like me to send you an email once every three or four months with the classes I've taken over the last three or four months with any new self tapes? So you can see my progress with new headshots. What's the best way for me to, to help you as my agent be a team player with me? So as long as you make it about helping your agents when you ask at the beginning and set up the expectation that you're going to be working hard on your end, that you're not just sitting at home watching TV and playing PlayStation and waiting for us to call you with an audition. Um, I really like to go through submissions lists with my actors every six months and just show them the type of roles that I've submitted them for. And we look at their profile and what we haven't got them in the room for. Um, I know, I don't know if every agency likes to do that or every agent likes to do that, but I find it a very useful tool. So you can approach your agent by saying, Hey, what characters have you submitted me for that I haven't gotten in the room for? So I can go out and get more training, more skill set, or more character looks to support what you're submitting me for. Because at the end of the day, we only make money if you make money. So if you help us make you money, we're all happy, right? So I think, and then when you send text messages or emails, don't send four or five a day. Wait until <laughs> the end of the week and send one or wait until the end of the month. Like maybe have a, have a spreadsheet where you write down all the things you want to ask your agent and then wait until you have an opportunity to ask it as a group. Because if I get six emails from you with six different questions every week, I'm probably going to stop opening those emails and talk to you about it on the phone and just say, hey, you need to slow down because we have to focus on submitting and uploading videos and making those connections that you can't make as an actor, right? So that's, you want us to be focused on submitting and talking to casting, not on updating your videos or uh, compressing your files and, and answering questions like, hey, should I dye my hair blue today or should I keep it red? 
I mean, that's important. Don't dye your hair blue until you talk to your agent. But you know what I mean? Like you really want us focused on submissions and booking. So that's my tip. <laughs> that's great. What, what type of acting programs do you think will benefit actors? Or... Uh, that's great. Uh, it depends on the person. <clears throat> um, I think you should always audit classes if you can, like contact local coaches, if you're getting training from an actor, make sure they're a working actor, not someone that booked something 20 years ago and then decided they couldn't get booked so they talked. That's not a great way to learn in my personal opinion. Find out who casting directors look at. Like, see if you can figure out with your agent. If casting directors always pull in people that have this school, this school, and this school, do your due diligence. But again, we all like to learn differently. Some of us like to learn from a book and a sheeted page. Some of us like to learn from doing. So auditing classes, like sitting in on a class for free or a $20 drop-in to see if it's the right school for you is great. Um, I know in Vancouver, there's a lot of smaller schools that do like 12 week programs. There's bigger schools like New Image College and BFS that do like two year programs. Um, just looking at who the teachers are that actually teach at those places, looking at reviews. I mean, you're gonna spend a lot of money on training <laughs> or you, you might spend a lot of money on training and you want to do your due diligence and make sure it's like buying a car. Would you just see a car that you think, oh, that looks nice and go buy it and drop 60 grand and then all of a sudden you realize it's not the car for you and it loses value? Um, you can't even resell a school program so <laughs> yeah. where you can resell a car and get a little bit of your money back. But really do your due diligence, look them up, find out what schools offer exactly what you need and then try and audit some classes first. That's crucial. Yeah, so there's a lot of resources um, outside of acting courses and acting classes. Um, what other resources would you suggest to actors? Uh, I mean, there's, I would Google. There's a ton of things on YouTube and all that. <laughs> yeah. um, it's pretty tough though. Like there's some great casting directors that do Facebook lives uh, out of LA and New York and Toronto. And um, it's pretty tough to find everything all in one place. That's why I kind of nerded out and created an actor's book for our, our actors. Yeah. Um, it's, we, because every second Sunday we would do workshops and one week it would be about headshots and I'd bring in a couple of headshot photographers that would talk about their tips. And then we'd sit and somebody would stand up and say, okay, before you even know me um, and my skill set, what roles would you cast me in? And, and everybody around them would say, oh, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a kid. Oh, you're 25 to 35 age range. Um, and over time, I just started accumulating all this knowledge. So we kind of put it into a, a book and, and we've actually just published it because people need to know. and. What I'm really excited about is uh, we're partnered with Covenant House. Um, it's a house for homeless youth. It's been around for a very long time. And the proceeds from this book are going towards Covenant House, which helps homeless youth get back on their feet. And uh, one of the other nonprofits that I'm on the board of called Teen Wealth, which is mental health for teens. So we're excited to publish this book and share it because it gives actors all the tools they need from beginning to end. And our actors are actually creating videos to teach those lessons in the book right now. So it's accessible online too. And then all the money goes towards uh, helping teens that need help. So that's a big passion of mine as well. That's... And Ignite's, yeah, very happy. Our guys donated food and money and so many things over the last year to Covenant House. They went and volunteered there and I was just so proud of them. Thanks, Ignite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So, something I hear agents and casting directors say over and over is that mm -hmm. talent overlook the business side yes. of the acting industry. Well, so... it's literally... Look, this is my success guide, so I live the life of my dreams. I am in the business of acting because people are, you're all creative, heart centered types who want to share your story, but sometimes you don't have the, the business skills. And, and at the end of the day, it's, it's like a doctor. If your friend liked a scalpel and blood and said, Let me operate on you, would you let your friend operate on you, or would you go to an actual surgeon who's had training? It's the same thing with acting. You need to be a professional, right? Yeah, no, that's it as a good analogy. Let's talk about your book. So it's called I Am an Actor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you have some stuff prepared. So if you want to throw I that do, up yeah. on the screen, so, you take a look at it. I'm curious to see it. <laughs> we'll go through some of the, oh, um, do you mind enabling my screen sharing? Oh, yeah, that, that old thing. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see. All right. And then I will hit screen share. Open. Nope. Marvelous. I think I shared the wrong one. Sorry, one second. That. I shared the wrong window, Tommy. I'm sorry. Love. <laughs> one second. That's all good. <laughs> it's technology. We'll, uh, oh, goodness. We'll... 
like you said, it's all we said it's always evolving, and it's so funny to. <laughs> did I get this right today? Yeah, I've uh, <laughs> had my fair share of. Uh, Struggles with technology. <laughs> Struggles with technology, despite well, it being my profession. <laughs> well, that's another great thing too, like that people need to think about, and that's why it's so good to have um, knowledge of your self tape studio all set up before you get that request, right? Yep. It's hugely important. Yeah, because um, you can spend okay, I think I've all got day it here. getting that going. Perfect. Share. So I just kind of pulled a couple of the pages out of the book just to share with everyone. Is it, is it coming through clear on your end? I can see it. It looks wonderful. <laughs> um, oh, is my camera off? Did I do that? Oh, it's probably because I'm sharing. It's all good. Okay. All good. Um, so yeah, basically it's just the cover here and why the book was created. I mean, there's no perfect answers in life, nor are there in the film and entertainment industry and any agent, casting director, producer, friend, family member, if they tell you that they know the exact answers, I think they're wrong. <laughs> because it's ever evolving and you're a human and every single person in this industry that's creating this art is a human too. And so we're all fallible. We all have different opinions on things. So this book is really like, you have to know as an actor uh, going into it, who you are and what you want with your life. And make sure that no matter what obstacles come up, because they will, we all know they will in life that acting is such a big part of you and who you are and your lifestyle forever that nothing is going to come in the way of your dreams. So that's why this book was created just to really help people stay on track because it, it can take years for some of us. Right. Yeah. Um, so we kind of start off with like the holistic kind of side, my why, what is your driving force for why you do what you do? Why do you want to work so hard? Why are you going to wake up every morning and practice and study and learn new techniques to get in the room? It's, why you do what you do with your life and then we talk about vision and all that so um if you're out there and you don't know why you're doing this if it's for somebody other than you write down why you're doing it and and it'll keep you on track or let you know that this is not the path that you really want to be on and then you can move on you know so just yeah. know because it's there's right now so oh, some of the um uh some of the casting directors are seeing upwards of four thousand people submitted per role you know, sure. there's a lot of competition out there. So if you don't love this and want to do it every single day for the rest of your life, it's going to do you a disservice. So just make sure that you want this and know your why and the reasons behind it and what you want your vision for your life to look like. Yeah. And, and going back to that, um, I, I think so often we have it in our heads as to why we're doing the, that thing, but it's yeah. hard when you have to put that down in paper Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's great that you have that as a spot where you have to write that out and really think about it. Well, the book's like 130 pages and that's just part one. Like we're actually doing part two with a couple of casting directors and some established actors right now to really dive into some of the, the bigger stuff. But this is more about like your journey and getting started. But I've had principal actors that have been in the industry for 10 years that have got really good credits that have kind of lost their drive for it at moments and just, oh. <laughs> Uh, just knowing their why and going back to this and writing it down again and then ripping this page out of the book and posting it on the wall. It's just like a reminder of, it's like your vision board, you know? Yeah. Do you have a vision board, Tommy? I don't. I should get one. <laughs> <laughs> My vision board, actually, I, I do have one and I have uh, this conversation on it and it's come true. Oh, cool. <laughs> you were on that. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to chat with you. Yeah, we, I mean, we have one for Ignite too. Like every time we get a thank you letter from an actor or um, like pictures of them on set that they send once they've, you know, the ones that don't have you sign the NDA <laughs> for the pictures, the ones that allow you to promote it. We have that wall and it's just like a wall of inspiration because some days as an agent, you're in your office at one o'clock in the morning and you've uploaded a hundred self tapes and your eyes are bleeding from staring at a computer. Yeah. And then you just look up at that wall and see the faces of people's dreams you made come true. And that's what makes you keep going at 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. And then we just kind of ask questions like, are you ready? There's so many people that think, oh, I'm an influencer, so I can be an actor. An actor is lot of work. I mean, you have to really be able to delve into the human experience and share that and step into someone else's shoes and feel their humanity. And so 
things like analyzing a script and character building, developing that physical life for an imaginary being. So we kind of have checklists all throughout the book on what you need. And then, you know, like I just wrote in here that you have to have a mad burning desire to never stop learning and 4,567 other little things that come along the way because every role that you step into, you're going to learn new things. So um, yeah, knowing that you have to study how to create character and do scene analysis is so important and a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of steps to becoming a great actor yeah. things to think about um this is one of my favorite pages in the whole book it's very simple but it's big goals for 2020 it's just like write down one goal per month so that your big dreams seem more attainable you know we, we actually go through uh, a 10-year goal for everyone where you want to be in 10 years and then we do one big goal per year and then we break it down to one big goal per month and that really helps people to stay on track because sometimes it's very daunting to think, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars in five years. However, if you break it down into smaller sums of money for different opportunities, it becomes clearer and there's a path that you can move forward on and keep yourself in check. Even when the times get tough, if you need to take a month off, that's fine. At least you have the goals for the next month when you're re-inspired, right? So, yeah, totally. I recommend that for everyone. <laughs> Um, and then, I, I mean, for anyone out there, just habits to success. I mean, writing down three things that you want to do every day or every week or every month for your career, for your mental health and your physical health. Guys, that's so important. If you're not taking care of your mental health and your physical health as an actor, take some time, step back and look at that first because you can't do a good service to your audience. Like acting is all about serving the audience. And yeah, you can't be collaborative, Collaborative. sorry, for the other actors on set, for the director, the producer, your agent, unless you're in a really healthy mental space. And being an actor is a lifelong pursuit. So think about that person, take care of you. A lot of people think, oh gosh, I can't do, I uh, can't take 10 minutes every day to work on my acting career because that's a lot. Well, if you add that up at the end of the week, you know, you just one hour each week is great. So I always look at it like a book that's 1800 pages long seems really daunting. But if you read just five pages a day, you'll complete that book at the end of the year. So think of the big role you want to achieve at the end of the year. What can you do for five minutes a day that will get you there at the end? Like break it down so it seems less scary so that there's, you take away the anxiety from it. Um, if you can't commit to daily, do weekly. That's 35 pages on a Sunday, on a lazy Sunday of reading a book to read an entire book at the end of the year. When you break it down to the smaller numbers and it becomes manageable, that's the same thing with skill sets as actors. I know some of our actors, uh, from other countries are trying to get their American uh, accent down and they're like, oh, it's too hard to change the entire way that I speak. But if you find one sentence a week and work on that, by the end of the year, you'll have a lot of sentences <laughs> that <you can laughs> yeah. with that American accent, right? So yeah, yeah, we just, yeah. No, it's, it's great advice. Um, reminds me of uh, working on my Duolingo app, you know, just oh, cool. bu bugs me for a, a couple minutes each day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now I'm fluent in Spanish. No, not really. But I'll get there. I'll get there eventually. Fluent in American or Canadian or which language were you? <laughs> I don't know. I barely speak English as it is. <laughs> uh, and then, so, so like the whole beginning of the book, this is just kind of some of the most vital things that I think people should work on as actors, especially at the beginning uh, and throughout. I mean, figuring out balance, write down six areas in your life that are the most important and then make sure you're putting a ton of energy into them. Or maybe it's just three and make sure that that's so like, I know I have some weeks when I'm not very focused and I'm watching TV for four hours. If I were to take away two of those hours and put towards my dreams, I'm more inspired. I'm more excited. I'm generally more successful. So finding a balance. So there's like 10 pages on finding your balance and your and getting your habits in order in there. Like just get a diary. If you don't have access to a book like this as an actor, just get a diary and start creating these things for yourself. Um, and we talk a lot about mental health in this because Ignite is uh, partnered with a couple of mental health nonprofits um, and it's a huge passion of mine personally as well. So we really talk about dealing with rejection in the industry and staying motivated and getting over your audition and anxiety. We actually have a woman right now writing a 10 page article because she's written books and she's a, an anxiety coach in Canada on, on how to reduce your anxiety in the audition room uh, before the audition, when you're on set, if you struggle with those kind of things. Um, and she's given us some really cool techniques like she's done some free workshops for our actors on how to reduce uh, stress and anxiety so focusing on that too like get your mental health in check first and that i i can guarantee you you'll be a better actor and a better uh, 
factor for your agent as well at the end of the day. It's so very important. And knowing your inner circle, Tommy, you were asking about the, applying to agents right now, finding the right agent for you, you should have a checklist of five to 10 things you want in your agent. And then when you when they're interviewing you or auditioning you, you should be able to ask them back too. Do you offer any coaching? Do you offer any resources for me to get better? Do you um, meet with your actors in person once a year? Sorry, ah, going forward, it's too fast. <laughs> um, it's really important that you find the right team for you. Just everyone's trying to get an agent so quickly. Do it right, not right. fast, you know? Yeah, um, and your inner circle, like I have so many friends from over the years, I've been very blessed, but you know, we all need an inner circle that is supportive of our dreams um, and that is kind of in the same area. Like if you have a, a five people that you hang around with that are better at you than and what you do, and they're where you aspire to be, you'll learn so much more for them. So you have to, if acting is really your dream, if this is what you want, surround yourself with people that are gonna give you the tools to get there. Um, collaboration is so important. So just little things like that, we just really start off with kind of the holistic side of, of taking care of you so that you can be the best actor you can be. Um, yeah, the, the go through a whole section on building a professional relationship with your agents that you're a good team because at the end of the day you are a team we're not just representing you and submitting you we're trying to help you achieve your big goals and dreams right so um and then there's like 100 pages in the book that are all about the business of acting because you need to know the business side of it i asked several of my actors a year and a half ago we were doing a big photo shoot with everyone it was a lot of fun and i said what um what are the five casting directors for each of you that you know cast for roles that you could do in Vancouver and tell me a little bit about each of them. And all of these senior actors who had credits literally could name one or two and they weren't <laughs> sure exactly what they were casting. And yeah. I always say to them, I'm like, gosh, if you're going to university and spending all this money to become a banker, are you going to uh, do your research on the top five banks you wanna work for and know what they're looking for in a person so you can build those tools? And they went, I'm like, wouldn't you do that? And they're like, yes. And I said, so as an actor, why don't you do that with casting? And they're like, oh. so these are just like little tiny business tips on how to save money and all that kind of stuff. And just things to think about because people don't always think about that. So, Yeah, I, I think it's uh, useful. I have a, a friend who's an actor in Vancouver and she, um, you know, has been working as a casting assistant, getting to know casting directors that way, but, you know, originally didn't know anything. She had moved to Vancouver. And then over time has got to know all the casting directors, even a lot of the agents and kind of know who's who. That's just so helpful to have a, a better understanding of the industry that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is for sure. Um, yeah, I just, it's amazing how we don't think about it. I think, I think a lot of actors have been told, oh, that's not a real job by their family and friends. Oh, it's just something you do on the side. It's a hobby. Yep. But if you treat it like a hobby, it'll never become that dream career that you want, right? And, and it's sad that people say that you can't. And we want to give them the tools that they can. So um, this is just part of, part of it, right? Never, yep. If this is something you really want, you know it in your heart, don't let anybody tell you no. Just get the right tools and, and learn the business side of it too. Yep. Um, yeah, so knowing the softwares too. I mean, Casting Networks is so amazing. Like you guys check all the boxes for us as agents, I find. Um, it's just so simple to use. And I think actors should spend an hour a month minimum, probably get your your profile set up and make sure everything's good do all the tutorials so you know it inside and out so you don't miss any amazing opportunities um and then set an alarm on your phone every sunday for 20 minutes to go in and make sure everything's up to date if you've gained some covid weight or grown some covid hair like tommy and i have, yeah. <laughs> you know add that to there make sure it's up to date because if you go in the room and you look different or you're acting differently because you've learned new skills. It's almost like you've already lied to the casting director. It drives seen, them crazy. They've seen your crazy. resume and then you go in there and you don't have. So it's just yeah. really important to know these softwares in and out to do every tutorial that you can on the softwares and to reach out like support. Your, your support team Tom, is amazing. Like within <laughs> minutes, we have an answer back all the time. It's just fabulous because it's 
I mean, we're receiving, I just, I remember looking at my email inbox yesterday from the time I left the office to the morning, I had 140 emails in my inbox to go through. And that's a lot, right? Yeah. So um, having our actors have perfect profiles so that we can just focus on submitting and answering the questions is so helpful. And when we need answers, you guys answer right away. So it's so helpful. Thank I'm you. glad to hear that. <laughs> No, and, and, you know, to add to that, you know, don't wait for your agent to do it for you. I know a lot of actors are like, oh, my agent's going to go in and update this for me. It's like, don't wait for them to do it. Just log in and, and take some time to get that updated because I can't tell you how many times casting has gone like this person looks nothing like this person or this person's union status is off. This per whatever it is, is just, it, it drives them crazy and just adds more work for them. And you want to yeah. do as much as possible, not to, um, I was going to say piss off. I'll just say piss off, not to <laughs> piss off. The casting director. Make, make their job easy and uh, make your agent's job easy. And that's just one yeah. less thing you have to think about. Yeah, because like you said, we, we want people focusing, we want to be focused on submitting, not focusing on like recategorizing photos. And, and yeah. I, think, I think the biggest thing is people don't realize that everything is, oh, sorry, I keep going forward too much. <laughs> I have a trigger finger, quick trigger finger. Um, I think what people don't realize too is it's a computer algorithm. So if they don't have their union, even if they're non-union, if they don't check off non-union or they don't put in their birth date, not that casting can see the birth date, it's just for the search. If, if casting gets 4,000 people submitted uh, that are very broad range, they may narrow that search down. And if you haven't even ticked off that your uh, apprentice union, for example, and they tick that off, the computer doesn't even know to bring your profile up. So even if your agents made a nice push for you within the message box, and submitted you because they know you're perfect for it. But then the, the casting director or their team um, like reshuffles their search. The computer doesn't even know to bring you up. So you have to have it very complete. So go through it like with a fine tooth comb and make sure it's up to date. And, and don't just wait for your agent to do it because that's literally like taking your dream in your hand, handing it to another human being and then saying, okay, maybe it'll happen make your own stuff happen. That's why I say know your why, know exactly what your goals are. And then that way, if your agent's not serving you with that collaboration, then you can move on, you know? So. Yeah. Um, the, the whole book too, just, this is so important. So many people are like, what character look should I get? And you just Google what looks are on trend in the industry or pick up a copy of our book or whatever you need to do. But it's really great to know because you can watch a ton of shows and see oh there's almost always a police officer or there's almost always a hipster or whatever it is you know depending on your age category and your look so knowing that before you get headshots is so important an actor's resume so many times we get like <laughs> a one page i'm so excited I'm shuffling <laughs> things around. um sometimes we get so people, people are so excited that they'll have like three photos on their resume and just a bunch of stuff stop it we have like two seconds to make a decision on you and casting does too, because we get so many applications. Like our agency gets between 10 and 30 a week on a slow week and 50 plus on a busy week. So you want to make it, bam, this is how I look. Bam, these are my skills. Bam, these are my goals. Do you want me? Do I fit? So just make your actor's resume, column one, column two, column three. Don't, if you, I always say to people, if you have a four page resume as an actor, cut the fat, trim the fat. I worked at McDonald's when I was 14. I don't have McDonald's on my resume anymore. You know what I mean? So if you're already booking credited shows, get rid of the student films, get rid of the indies, get rid of anything that doesn't serve your future. Show people what trajectory you're on. The, I am a principal actor. This is where I'm going with my life. My profile reflects that. Then the agent knows that you're the right person that they can represent because they know that you understand the industry. So there's so many little keys to all of this. And a very simple resume really helps. Um, <laughs> And this is just something fun, Tommy, that I'm throwing in here. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, when a person's creating a self-tape, to if they're fairly new, to, to, to share with an agency, a lot of them will do like a two or three or four minute scene to try and show <laughs> that they can do everything. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, you don't have time. They only have five seconds or 10 <laughs> seconds to watch your clip. So start it with something amazing and do short things. Do short scenes, three to five lines because it's so much harder to create the environment around you and, and have a great backstory to your character so it comes through your acting from a short line. Like I love this, this example here. We actually did this at one of our workshops like a year ago and it's so much fun. I said to everyone, shut the door. 
this is the three words that you're going to come in and act. And some people came in and, and did them like they come home from a date and one winks at the other and goes, Ooh, shut the door. And then, you know what I mean? And then there's another where there's a child misbehaving and the mother's yelling or the father's yelling, they're like, shut the door. You can reinterpret things so well, but you have to have created that character. And I'm not an actor, so please don't take that as an acting tip on what I just did. But just to give an example, um, yeah, make short clips that look great, sound great, and show exactly who you are in your range as an actor. Don't worry about doing a huge scene. We won't watch it all anyways. We just don't have the time. It's not that we don't care. We just need to focus on submitting our guys. So think about things like this. It's all about the subtext and your body language. And yeah, it's like that line, these pretzels are making me thirsty. I'm a big Seinfeld fan. So I had to yeah. throw that in there. <laughs> just do that um, line over and over and over again yeah. in different <laughs> styles. Yeah. And if you haven't seen that episode, guys, go watch it. You'll see exactly <laughs> what I mean by trying to figure out how to bring a line across. Yeah. Um, and then just social media. So a lot of people are promoting themselves on social media and a lot of our actors have asked us how they should have a social media account. Um, sometimes I recommend one for your personal life and one for your professional life. If you think people are going to be looking at your social media, not everybody does. A lot of cast members just don't even have an Instagram or a Facebook because they're just too busy to manage that. Um, but every once in a while we have requests to also send someone social media link and if it's not professional and it doesn't convey who you are, like if there's a great picture of you doing a great self tape and your headshot on your feed and then in your story it's you doing tequila shots the night before with 10 people shirtless, <laughs> it's probably not helping you look professional to <laughs> perspectives in the future. So learning about social media, who is it for and what do you want it to convey is really great. We've recently just partnered with a, a really cool app called Spark It that um, partners actors with uh, books from Amazon and they can talk about books that have helped them in their life. And then every time they submit those sparks, they get paid for it and it broadens their followers. So it's really cool because we represent influencers too, right? So knowing social media and how it serves you and you don't have to have social media by any means to be an actor, in my opinion, I'm not always right. Um, but it's not like something that you must, must have, but it's, I think it's good to have one and, and show your professional side. Even if you only post once a month and it only goes towards your acting career, I think that's smart. It, it definitely doesn't hurt um, to have a professional social media account. Yeah, totally. Um, and this is just the back cover of the book because never give up. If this is really what you want, guys, never give up on yourself. So I love this quote, if plan A doesn't work, there's 25 more letters in the alphabet to try, plan B, plan C, plan D, all the way through to Z, and then you can start with plan one, plan two, plan three. Like, if this is your dream, I don't care if your parents, your friends, anybody around you says, oh, that's not a real thing, that's not a real career. If this is what you love and you want it, just be prepared to work your butt off for it, have the business sense, surround yourself with the right people, um, and just never stop. Like. Never give up. I'm, I've been told my whole life, oh, stop, stop doing mental health charities. Stop doing all these crazy jobs. Stop traveling all over the world. And it's all led me to a place where I'm extremely happy and pay all my bills on time. So uh, if that's what you want in life, just never give up. And um, if you need a resource like this book, um, it's all by donation and it goes towards helping homeless youth and mental health for teens. So we're happy to share it. We're going to make a, a bunch of videos too to explain in depth more of these things so that we can walk you through the first year so if you're brand new to acting or even if you're a seasoned actor it's nice to be refreshed on what, what keeps you driven and, and new techniques and things because the industry tell me like we talked about is always changing yeah no that's great and we'll definitely add a uh, a link to the book on on our youtube channel uh, for people to check out um and probably some other places um and that's it for the book, right? Like that's all you had prepared on here, right? Yeah, I just pulled out like kind of some of my favorites that people, whether they get the book or not, they have some lessons that I think will really put them on a straight path. And I know they can watch this sucker on repeat on YouTube. So, <laughs> No, I love it. Um, well, I think we're, yeah, we're out of time. This like flew oh, by. Wow. So this was amazing. Always lovely to speak with you um, and chat with you. Uh, I, I like to end these things with um, a piece of advice or encouragement or a, a funny anecdote or something that happened yesterday, whatever you want to add uh, for the audience. Oh, goodness. Um, Put you on the spot. 
Yeah, no, I like that. I actually host a radio show on Mondays with Voice America for the last four years. In the last 30 seconds of the show, I say, if you could sit down and tell the whole world one thing, what would it be? And people are like, ugh. And you know what? I'm going to use the same answer that 90% of the people on our show use, and it's be kind. Sorry, it's not something funny or exciting, but if you see someone on set struggling, be kind to them. You, I, can, I can't even explain how many times someone has done something out of kindness and then they've been taken. You never know who you're doing something kind for. So whether you're doing it for selfish reasons to get yourself ahead or because you really love other people and serving humanity, just do it. Trust me, it'll further you as a person and a career. So I think be kind because you put me on the spot. I stole everybody else's answers from the radio show, but it's true. If we're kinder to each other, we'll get further faster. Kindness does everything in this world and it's unfortunately so necessary at this point in human history. So that's my two cents. I love it and I echo those sentiments. Uh, thanks again, Brandy. And thanks, thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.